Hello everyone, I recently just came back from an engagement photo shoot with a good friend of mine and there were a few editing tips and tricks that I kind of wanted to go through. A few of my friends have asked me about doing a little video on some of these sometimes so I thought I'd just go through a very quick edit um, about how we're going to go from this photo on the left to this photo on the right. Um, so first things first, we're going to reset this. We're going to get rid of the other photo and we're going to think about what kind of photo is this? Where are people going to look at it? This is an engagement shoot photo. This is probably going to go on people's social media. This is going to be on Instagram. This is going to be on Facebook, that kind of stuff. Instagram, Facebook both have white backgrounds. So you're going to want to be editing on a background that is sort of similar to where it's probably going to be published. Every photo is kind of only as bright or as exposed as its surroundings. If it was going to be published on a website that was totally in black and nowhere else. You'd probably want to edit it like this because this is really how people are going to see it. Again, the frame around a photo is almost just as important as the photo itself. So we're going to go for white here because that's kind of where we expect this to end up. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go down here. We're going to grab this sharpness slider, put it all the way to zero. We're going to deal with the sharpness later. We don't want the whole photo being sharpened. These backgrounds elements do not need sharpening whatsoever. Um, they are totally uninteresting. All we really care about is the lovely couple in the center. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn on chromatic aberrations. Though I got to say, this photo doesn't really have any noticeable aberrations, even around these high contrast areas. There's maybe a little bit, but... Well, I guess you might as well just turn it on. Second thing is we're going to turn these uh, profile corrections. Normally Lightroom will automatically detect what lens you're doing, uh, using or what lens you have used and apply the corrections automatically. In this case, we're using an adapted Canon lens on a Sony camera. It will not recognize that. We will go down to the Tamron. It will automatically recognize it is using the 70 to 200 F2 8G2 and it will apply that lens profile correction. So again, this is kind of a optimistic, hopeful sort of shooting style. And for that, we're going to probably want to get rid of a lot of this vignette just because it makes the photo feel a bit more airy. So we're definitely going to brighten up these corners. Let's look at our histogram. So this was shot in AV mode. The camera was trying to protect highlights while also trying to expose for the couple, which is obviously a brutal task considering the contrast of the sun to the foreground. Um, the camera didn't clip any of the blacks, so that's kind of cool. It did seem to push the highlights here quite far. If I pull this back, as you can see, it has actually preserved all of them. None of them are clipped if we turn them down, so that's pretty cool. That is modern full frame technology for you against a shot at ISO 100, so the camera will be making use of its full dynamic range when you're shooting with an ISO this low. The first thing we're going to want to do is what do we actually care about? What, what should be bright? We want to see the couple. Right now, they are kind of hidden in shadow. It's a bit too dark for us, so we're gonna whack up the exposure just to get a general vibe of where we probably want them to be. Okay, so we've gone up two steps of exposure. Now the background is pretty blown out, but that's not really a problem with here. There's nothing there that we necessarily need to see. And later, we're gonna look at how we're gonna get back some of that cool bokeh in the background while retaining uh, how visible they are in the foreground. Um, I think the most important thing to do right here is once she's gotten this general exposure down is go to our adjustment brush up here at the top right. This is going to help us do some dodging and burning on them. So dodging and burning is basically just localized uh, brightening and darkening in your photo. In Photoshop this is usually done with an external layer um, because it's a destructive process. In Lightroom you merely use this brush. This is a non-destructive process. You can kind of go over it later. Basically what we're going to be doing is, and I'm just going to exaggerate the effect for a moment to uh, drive a point home here, is I'm going to put the exposure to plus four stops. I'm going to draw on his shirt. As you can see, we're adding four stops of exposure everywhere this brush goes. That is obviously ridiculous. We really just want something maybe a bit more subtle for now, just like a third of a stop. If I just before after and you look at his shirt, you can see it's not changing enough to kind of make you think that something weird's going on here to make it look super artificial, just enough to nudge your eyes in a certain direction. So next one we're gonna do is we're gonna hit O. This is gonna reveal where we've already painted with the adjustment brush. So everywhere where this red stuff is, is where the brush is gonna, is gonna uh, assign these changes we've made on the right. Another important thing to do is turn on the auto mask. The auto mask is gonna kind of try and identify the edges around what you're drawing on. So if I go here, it'll try and color within the lines. This is like kindergarten, you know, stay within the lines. And the program will do it mainly for us. If we don't have it on, it'll just kind of draw wherever we go. Um, which isn't really an issue either. Again, this is a non-destructive process. We can always just erase what has gone over the borders, which we will do later anyhow. The auto mask isn't perfect either, but it's still an amazing tool. 
Um, so here I think it's getting the edges pretty well. It's actually quite impressive. You probably want to draw on this mode because it really helps you spot like patchy spots where you kind of missed again. You see here it, it missed, we missed this spot here. So it's very easy visible when you have this uh, red overlay going on. We missed her shoulder there. Um, a little bit of his like nose and forehead, her forehead as well, top of the head, all these kind of things. And if you want to delete anything, um, like if you want to zoom in like this, by the way, hold down spacebar and click, that'll zoom you in on that area. And if you hold spacebar and grab, you can move around while you're zoomed in. So if you have this, the drawing brush, and then you hold down the alt, it will turn on the eraser brush. And then if you draw it over, as you can see, it just deletes these red areas. You can kind of run that over the side of the people here. Again, uh, might not even be necessary in this photo. Um, it looks like the auto or the adjustment brush, the, the auto mask I meant to say, caught most of the areas. So we can just maybe do the top of his head a bit here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have them, I'm just missing her neck. We have them fully covered in our adjustment brush and now we can do localized treatments that will only target the couple and not the background. So one of the things we're gonna do is kind of see where they sit exposure wise, we can probably whack this up by about two thirds of a stop, so about 0.6 exposure. You can add a bit of contrast here as well. The reason why this might work is that contrast is sort of a byproduct of sharpness. So this will help sharpen them, help them pop a bit more. And you can push this a little bit without making the photo look really weird. Cause there is kind of a point where the human eye just realizes somebody has been messing around with this. This looks pretty fake. If you just add a little bit of it, it can kind of work. So, you know, you don't want to be like slamming it over here at 100. Though, actually, I gotta say, it doesn't even look that bad in this photo, but I'm still gonna try and keep it kind of realistic around the 30 here. Here, we're gonna address the sharpness. Early, we took it out. We're gonna add it back in here. The only thing that really matters about being truly sharp in this photo is the lovely couple in front of us. Everything else is kind of secondary. These leaves in the background don't need to be sharp. This blown out sun and bokeh do not need to be sharp. We don't really care about those things. So, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the colors. Well, okay, actually, before we address these localized colors, we should probably look at the white balance. So again, this is kind of a warm, optimistic, we're getting married, this is happy. Um, this was shot on a beautiful day in England. Yes, those do exist around here. And we're just going to try and make the photo maybe a bit warmer without kind of ruining their skin tones, without giving them like a Jersey Shore tan. So to maybe just push it. Yeah, just two stops to the right. Then what we can also do here is go down to the split toning, grab the highlights and just add a little nudge of warmth to those as well. Again, you don't want to crazy overdo this. You can before or after this, it just adds a little bit more warmth to those highlights just to drive the point home. Now this is where I'm going to do some interesting stuff because the HSL is hue, saturation, and luminance. Luminance being very important because the human skin, at least Caucasian skin, I mean to say, sits kind of right around this orange range. So you can just grab this and push this up and make them appear brighter pretty safely. This is going to influence some of the light coming from the sun, but the sun mainly sits around this yellow here in this photo. So we can kind of treat those two a little bit separately here, which is super nice. So we're just going to move this to the right a little bit like that just to make them pop a bit more again before after this gives them a bit more machine makes them more the focus of the photo um then we're gonna play with the hues here as well because we shot this outside there are plants here most plants are going to sit somewhere around this green and yellow range so you can kind of decide what vibe you're going for a bit in post-production here if you push this green slider to the right the plants are going to get kind of green and look very lively and if you push it to the left, it's gonna give it a bit more of a fall and autumn vibe. Though you do wanna uh, watch out how far you go with the hue. If you punch in on something like right here, you're gonna see that if we put the hue all the way to the left, it does create um, some kind of chromatic aberration around these colors. If you go to the other side, it'll do the same thing. That just looks kind of weird. So you kind of want to avoid going all the way extreme with any of these sliders, which is probably something you should do in general, kind of avoid going to any sort of extreme. We're just going to put it here to the left a bit, make it a bit more warm again. Then again, the yellows, you can do similar stuff though. Watch out here because this also influences the sun. If you put this to the right, it's going to change the color of their hair, the, the light rim around their silhouettes, and also just some of the lighting on their face. You really don't want to move this towards the green, but you can move it a bit towards the orange and just give it 
a little bit more kind of a warm stylized color there. Um, red and orange, want to watch out again because this is going to influence a lot of the skin color, so you don't want to go too far in any direction. In this case, I think I'm just going to move the orange one little notch to the left. And the red in this photo is mainly going to target sort of, I guess what you could say this is the fleshy bits of the face, the kind of the ear, the nose, the lips, that sort of stuff. So we're probably going to want to just move this a little bit to the left. Not too much, just to give those parts a little bit of definition. Here again, you can change the brightness of the sun. You can bring it down a little bit if you want to see a bit more of the bokeh and maybe take away from the totally blown up background. The green is going to mainly influence these leaves here. Probably not going to make a huge difference. You might want to brighten them a little bit just to, you know, alleviate some of the darkness from the photo. Not that there is much left. We're going to do two final things here. One of them you might find is a bit cheesy, but we're going to grab a graduated filter up here and create sort of or exaggerate the sun flare that's already coming to the photo. We're just gonna drag it across the photo like that, kind of drag it in the middle of the photo. And what a graduated filter is gonna do is it's gonna gradually apply an effect over the area that's been selected and it's gonna gradually increase or reduce depending which direction you look at it in, um, what you have applied. So in this case, if I do another extreme example, I'm gonna pull the exposure all the way down. As you can see, it's becoming gradually darker the further you go up or you know, gradually lighter the further you look down. And what we're gonna do in this case is we're just gonna pull the dehaze a bit to the left just to accent that flare at the top, while at the same time also pulling down the highlights a bit, maybe even the exposure, because we don't want it to just blow out everything even more than it already is. And to make it look like it's truly coming from the sun, you can go up here to the temperature and move the temperature slider maybe just a bit to the right. So here's what we have before, and here's it after, just adds this little flare in. You might like it, you might not. At the end here, we're going to do some kind of big global adjustments just to finish it off. Again, pay attention to these when you do them because these are going to be influenced by the adjustments you made earlier or you could say it the other way around. The adjustments you made earlier are now going to be influenced by the global changes you make. So kind of keep an eye on those. You might want to go back, readdress some of those adjustments later. So first thing we're going to do, we're just going to add a bit of contrast. Contrast can always be nice, adds a bit of color, adds a bit of sharpness, adds a bit of depth. We don't want to do anything too crazy here. We might want to bring down the exposure again now because we have added more with the adjustment brush on the couple, plus we added some with the luminance down here with the orange. So we're just going to grab this exposure, move it back down a bit. There we go. We have a bit more color, a bit more depth, and everything just looks a bit more healthy if you ask me. Um, here with the shadows, again, you could add a bit more depth pulling them down, but I guess in this case that will just cover up their faces, probably not something we want. Again, flip side, you could push it up a bit just to get a bit more luminance in the front, but I quite like where it is actually. Um, you can push the white level here just to add a bit more glow. Um, again, you want to kind of be, not go too crazy with this because we already have a lot of very white background and I guess we don't really need that any more crazily clipped than it already is. You could bring down the black levels here. If you see in the histogram, if you go up to the top left, there is a large hole here where there's no real blacks hitting zero. If you wanted to make use of the full dynamic range of your sensor, you can grab this black, pull it down a bit until we kind of get to the bottom, though I don't really like that in this photo. I think this is a bit more of a lighthearted photo that doesn't need to be that crushed at the bottom. I think like leaving these a bit higher is fine for the mood of the photo. Other things you have here is texture is kind of a relatively new function that was added to Lightroom. This can sort of function as a um, a more basic version of frequency separation if you're trying to clear up people's skin. I don't really think we need that in this case. Just to show you what it would do if you were to totally exaggerate it, it just, you know, it gives them this weird, like, uh, bad Photoshop airbrush look. I mean, no. Um, clarity, you also want to be really careful with people because the problem is if you turn this up to the right, this makes people look 15 years older than they really are. It does add a bit of punch to photos, but I don't really know if it's necessary. Um, dehaze, you could use a bit here maybe just to, again, this would lower the black levels a bit, add a bit of contrast, but you also want to be really careful with this because again, you dehaze too much and you start creating these weird color spots, especially in skin where it just gets way too saturated and everything looks a bit gross. So I'm also just going to leave that where it is. Might actually add just a bit more contrast here and just a little bit of saturation. And yeah, that looks more or less done for now. This is something I wouldn't mind showing a client, getting their opinion on. And if we go back to the start image, this is where we've come from from the left and we ended up on the right. Again, white background, we'll look at it medium gray. 
This is the Lightroom standard and then a black background. This is what it would look like on a black website. So it looks super bright on black. But again, this probably will be posted on Instagram, Facebook, etc. So I think the brightness is quite appropriate. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will be releasing a few more Lightroom tutorial editing videos in the near future. So please stay tuned and have a nice day.